classic. Let's go. Perfect tune. And the Coco Brothers. Do it like this. Experience this. Alright, let's talk about Aaliyah. Um, you know, Aaliyah is one of them topics, man, that like, you know, I can go on, I guess, about because I lived it, I guess. You know, I witnessed Aaliyah when she was out in her prime. Um, I was of age. So I remember a lot about Aaliyah before she died. And, um, uh, you know, what a loss, man, honestly. Like, so... The Aaliyah thing, right? Am I surprised that Aaliyah is like this thing that everybody sort of talks about now and has this rabid fan base? I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> at all. I mean, this fan base was, it was 20, 30 years in the making. Because you have to understand, Aaliyah to me was the best R&B singer of the 90s, easily, hands down. She was my favorite. And I'm not an R&B dude like that. So for Aaliyah to get my attention was like, whoa. And I'll tell you, there's a couple of reasons why I absolutely loved Aaliyah. Like, again, before she died, I was a big fan. So her dying obviously put her on a whole nother level. But there were two things that Aaliyah did that, to me, were just, like, so unique. There's a couple, I guess, but there's more than that. But the first thing, obviously, is I loved her fucking production. And again, this is that Timbaland shit. It was new. It was just some shit you'd never heard. And here's this girl, like... You know, she had these amazing beats, and then on top of that, just her voice and the way that she was swagging on it, it was like some unique shit to me. Like, I was like, what the fuck? You know, so that was obviously number one. The music itself was incredible to me, and I thought that she was the best R&B artist out. She was the most cutting edge, period, to me. Like, and I didn't think it was even close, to be honest with you. Um, T well, TLC was, was also pretty decent, you know. TLC had some stuff that was pretty cool, but it wasn't really like that. Um... Then, you know, in addition to that, obviously, Aaliyah was fucking gorgeous. Like, you have to understand, man, especially as a teenager, like, we were looking at someone like Aaliyah, and I was just like, here's this girl who's, like, just super cute, but kind of mysterious, but also just, like, down to earth, and there's a girl next door that has a personality. Like, you know, people have said even that the nature of her song, she wasn't on some, like, fuck guys, fuck, you know, my heart's been broken, you know, men suck vibe that was kind of a bit popular I would say with some R&B artists back in the 90s like she was more you know she talked about heartbreak but it was more of like oh there was a misunderstanding or um you know there was a sense that Aaliyah wanted to get to know you as a person and that she she liked women she liked men she was like you know not antagonistic to men and of course that shit was really attractive to us right I, I say us in general but I mean I'm speaking really for me um I think that honestly, those two major things was just obviously the music and her beauty. Uh, you know, and I say beauty is just obviously the looks, but just her personality and the vibe. Like her vibe was beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And you don't see that often. I mean, it's it's something when you see a girl that's attractive physically and actually has a beautiful vibe. That shit is fucking rare. And you know, and and to be real with you, like guys, especially when guys see some shit like that, they snatch that up quick. <laughs> They do their best, I mean, because it's so rare, you know what I'm saying? I mean, look, even as a human thing, it's rare, right? Like, most people that, in my opinion, and I'm, you know, going off topic a bit, but a lot of people that are conventionally attractive run the risk of, you know, not really having the greatest personalities, usually whether they be insensitive or just not even interesting people. They might actually be okay people, but they're just kind of not that exciting to be around right because they kind of coast on their attractiveness right so it's rare that you'll see somebody like an Aaliyah that has the personality while at the same time has the like the vibe that you just want right anyway so those two things made Aaliyah star I mean I remember man like back in the, this was entering high school or something like that maybe um I remember seeing are you that somebody and uh, I was just like that was the first Aaliyah song I think I ever heard and I just was like, whoa, <laughs> like, I mean, I saw the video because obviously Dr. Doolittle had come out. So I had the soundtrack and I liked the movie. And I remember seeing the video on MTV and just being like, 
you know, like to this day, I always remember like the dancers sliding underneath, like the, the male dancers sliding underneath uh, in between the girls' legs. Um, I just remember being like, this is the coolest shit I've ever seen in that beat with the fucking baby noises and the way it bounced. And But I was just like, this shit is, this is my shit. And it's all it took was one song. See, this is again back in the day when artists really weren't flooding the market with garbage. And all it took was really one song. One great song can make you a fan of somebody for the rest of your life because, I mean, it's a great song, right? And again, there was more quality control. So, Aaliyah comes out with that, and I, I'm a big fan. I missed the one in a million. Like, I was too young for that, so I didn't really, you know, I didn't witness that in real time when she came out with one in a million. So, Are You That Somebody was my entry point into Aaliyah. Um, and then I remember after that, the next big thing for me was We Need a Resolution. That shit was like, whew. I remember seeing the video for We Need a Resolution, and at the same time, they're like, we're gonna premiere this, you know, this song, We Need a Resolution, and I think the song hadn't even been out, or I hadn't heard it anyway, and I watched the video at the same time as I'm listening to the song, and I was fucking blown away. Like, you talk, you know, people talk about black science fiction and all that shit now, and that's starting to become a thing, but again, Aaliyah was kind of on the forefront of that. Like, you see her floating, it starts off with her, like, kind of floating, and or whatever and there's like you know she's playing with the snake and she it was like what the fuck the visuals were insane with Aaliyah like there was just so much effort and that's what I really liked about Aaliyah in general like you know she really had that vibe of I want to be an artist I want to make something that really captures the imagination of people so we need a resolution for sure let me see if I got that instrumental actually because that that beat is nuts I actually think that that's probably my favorite that's probably my favorite Aaliyah beat, you know? Um, the way it's even the sample of it is... That shit is nuts, man. Dun, dun. Uh, fuck, man, that shit is nuts. Um, you know, I don't know what the fuck this is, man. People be, you know, posting bullshit on here, man. Um, let's just start with this one. Dirty South, uh, can y'all really feel me? Um... Yeah, man, listen, Aaliyah was a legend. I mean, even back then, like I said, I remember having, I had this um, uh, German neighbor at the time when I was living in Saudi Arabia, right? So we're like the same age. And I remember him, he being like, yo, you know what, man? Like, I'm going to marry Aaliyah. Like, <laughs> you know, we're, you know, like middle school kids, right? Not middle school kids, but early high school. Um, and he was like a big Aaliyah fan. He was like, I'm going to marry Aaliyah. Like you watch and we would joke about the shit. And I was like, ah, okay. But the fact of the matter is that Aaliyah had fans out here, man. And this is well before. And then we heard, obviously she was going to do the matrix. I'm a big matrix fan. I was like, oh, she's going to be in the matrix. The second, I can't wait all this shit. So then, um, one day the news comes out that Aaliyah's died in a car, in a plane crash. And it was like, what the fuck? Like, that is the craziest celeb death, period, that I've ever witnessed in my lifetime. That, like, hit me, I would say, the hardest. And not like, I don't know Aaliyah, so it's not like I was sitting there sobbing or something like that, to be honest with you. But I, I was definitely, like, taken aback. Like, wow. Like, out of nowhere, this is somebody that I felt that, like, was such a good artist that I really liked. And life just took them away, type of thing. Um... So it was, it was sad, unfortunate. Those, you know, I would say like the two most surprising sort of saddest celebrity deaths to me, musician wise anyways, are definitely Aaliyah's number one and then MJ. And those two, you know, um, really was like, what the fuck? No. <laughs> um, anyway, so I would say that if you like Aaliyah or, you know, obviously please, you know, feel free to comment, but I mean, you should know Aaliyah's music. She has a lot of great shit. Like, she has a lot of great songs. My favorite ones, Are You That Somebody, obviously the beat playing in the background. I fucking love this record. We Need a Resolution, Hot Like Fire Remix, One in a Million, I Care For You, Rock The Boat. Man, Rock The Boat, when Rock The Boat came out, I mean, I'm not surprised, again, that that shit is a classic because Aaliyah was on the cutting edge, and that's what it is, man. When you're on the fucking cutting edge, people fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? And it's not like 
you know, they immediately get it. I don't think Aaliyah was like immediately a huge star. Even back then, I think that people liked her. She was definitely, you know, getting props and stuff like that. But it wasn't like she was the most sort of celebrated R&B artist out here. And people were like really checking for her super, super heavy. People were checking for her. Don't get me wrong. But she's definitely bigger in death now than she was back then. But she, but she was big. Don't, you know, don't get it twisted. My point is that the work, the music speaks for itself. And that's what kept her, you know, alive all these years. Because she did a lot, you know what I'm saying? The music, the style. And the style exists and still is relevant because the music was so strong. You know what I mean? So, you know, loose rap is another good one too. I mean, Aaliyah got joints out here. So, you know, I would say listen to her self-titled album. Um, obviously one in a million. And uh, you'll get a pretty good sense of the, you know, the good stuff that she came out with. And that's about it, man. I mean, obviously now that Aaliyah's dead and her stuff is starting to stream and things like that, I mean, you know, there's gonna be vultures out here trying to, you know, align themselves with Aaliyah's music. For sure, for sure. I mean, it's an easy come up, you know, whether it be for paper or for clout. It is what it is, right? But that doesn't take away from Aaliyah's legacy and her greatness and the stuff that she did with Missy and, and Timbaland. And having the foresight, honestly, I think, um, you know, Aaliyah and her team had that foresight like, yo, these Timbaland and, and Missy shits, this is the next shit. Because you have to understand, it's not like that stuff was out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they took a chance on a new sound. And Aaliyah was already popping. This is, again, back then, man, people, I want to say, were more inspired. You know what I'm saying? Like, we we had more ideas. Now it's like, everyone's following. It's like, follow, follow bullshit. Back then, you had space to actually do some unique shit and the audience would find you and actually be like, yeah, I like this. You know, now it's like everybody's on some clout shit. It's corny. Anyway, rest in peace to Aaliyah. And, um, you know, it's, you know, fortunate loss, of course. And uh, her music will always live on. Peace.